Now we'll discuss the implications for research, in particular the so-called fourth paradigm. And uh, that is highlighted by this well-known um, headline from Wired uh, from 2008. That's quite a long time ago. Those were times when people were talking about um, petabytes of data, whereas today they're talking about exabytes or zettabytes of data. And um, he said science has ended. Well, what they meant was not that science has ended, but the previous approach to science, if not ended, is being uh, supplanted or augmented by other approaches. And it's all coming from massive amounts of data from the so-called petabyte age, which was 2008. And here we list the four paradigms of scientific research theory and experiment, where the only two as of around 30 years ago, and the experiment is roughly the same as observation. And there was a, everybody used to emphasize the, how important it was to not just have theorists, not everybody could be Newton or, you, you, or Einstein. You also had to have people who gathered data. And um, that was a nice, comfortable, highly successful model for scientific research. Around 30 years ago, simulations took off as um, an important aspect of science to be able to simulate new materials, or simulate the early universe, or simulate chemistry. That was, um, that's the so-called computational science, or the third paradigm. And then recently, we've had the fourth paradigm, where the actual data itself tells you the answer. Whereas previously, data was used as a guide to produce theory or, or something to verify theory. It wasn't used as a pure discovery mode. There's a very nice online book from Microsoft, which I recommend that you can download for free. Here's a nifty example, which I like because the fellow looks so cheerful. This fellow at the time was uh, at Walmart Global E-Commerce. And he pointed out that he was teaching a class in the Bay Area. And um, he was, that class was uh, looking at a competition which uh, Netflix had, um, where they had a data set which, taught, which recorded how half a million people rated 18,000 movies. And you were meant to use these ratings to predict the ratings for movies in the set that they've not yet rated. This is a fundamental um, aspect of um, modern. Um, Big data, recommender systems, underlie Amazon, Netflix, dot, dot, dot. And there were, he had these student teams competing in this competition. And um, I, there was a prize. So his teams, I know his, his, his student teams were not competing for the prize, but just using this prize as part of their class. And he pointed out he had two teams. One um, gave a brilliant new algorithm. The other said, hmm, let's just add some new data to the problem. And the students who added new data but didn't change the algorithm actually did better than the ones who sweated blood, did lots of mathematics, and had a great new algorithm. So here's, that's what he says here. More data can beat better algorithms. Whether it usually beats, I'm not certain, but it certainly is very competitive with better algorithms. But always, of course, Commerce, this field is so competitive, you need the very best algorithm, even a, and the very best data. Because Netflix, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, etc., are all in some brutal competition. And the one who has the better result will win. 